This next company, uh, Robotany, combines one of the, the strengths of Carnegie Mellon. You know, we're, we've got the best uh, robotics startup ecosystem in the world right now, and, and we're going to be taking advantage of that. Uh, this combines the trend of, of robotics with uh, uh, local and uh, organic produce, and uh, Robotany is applying automation to vertical farming and they're reducing labor costs by 30 to 50 percent and output by one and a half. And yes, Colorado comes to mind when I think about this company. So let's welcome Austin Webb's co-founder. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. It's an honor to be up on the stage. Uh, again, my name is Austin Webb. I'm CEO and co-founder of Robotany. Um, and at Robotany, we are developing uh, automated robotic solutions uh, and software analytics to vastly improve vertical farming operations. Um, so we all know what automation is, we all know what analytics are, but what is vertical farming and what does it have to do with smart cities? Well, indoor vertical farming is the method of growing plants indoors in a controlled environment that simulates optimal growing conditions or the perfect spring, if you will, 24-7, 365. And in addition to that, you can stack, you can plant these, uh, these plants on racks and then stack each rack on top of one another 20 to 30 feet in the air. It's a very uh, innovative and incredible way of growing plants. Um, and it's certainly the future, especially when you think about growing uh, plants for cities. So if you think about 20 to 30 foot ceilings, you can get at least 10 rows on top of one another. So then you got 10 times the crop density per square foot where traditional can only grow on one layer. On top of that, you have no winter, you have no floods, you have no droughts, and you have no crop loss from disease and other insects, things like that that you get in outdoor traditional spaces. And so if you put that together, you can get as a floor number to think about 100 times yields versus traditional ag per square foot. Then you also have a number of uh, really important environmental benefits, some of which are being captured uh, already today, and some of which are not. And that's because while these vertical farms are the future, there are a few key problems. Namely, the ones that are out there today are inefficient. So very uh, manual and labor intensive uh, processes. Uh, workers are grabbing these trays, and they're very heavy by the way, one by one, and taking them over to harvesting stations. On top of that, in order to get up to the top rows, they have to use ladders and scissor lifts. So first of all, you got workers that are up there grabbing these heavy trays, leaning on one leg. It's very unsafe, and it's breaking OSHA standards from a qualitative headache standpoint. On top of that, these scissor lifts and these ladders require a lot of space. So you end up having large aisleways that you could otherwise be using to produce food. And that's really important because the verticality compounds the use of every inch of space. And on top of that, as you can see behind me, their, their, their data analytics is pretty limited. They're literally using pen and paper. And then they're backing that up with clunky Excel spreadsheets. So at Robotany, we're bringing plants to the worker. Our mobile robot goes and grabs the tray, takes it down to a conveyor belt or our track system, takes that out of the human free grow room and move on to the other stations. And so by doing that, purely with that and not even automating the rest of the workflow, we can increase uh, labor efficiency by 50%. On top of that, we no longer need these ladders and scissor lifts so we can bring the racks in closer together and therefore uh, increase crop output by over one and a half times. And then we have our ability to integrate our software platform that we're building in addition to the hardware and have all of our growing analytics and our optimization algorithms as well as our production analytics and the connection to demand management so that we can actually run our business optimally. And on top of that, when our robot grabs a tray, it takes a hyperspectral image with a hyperspectral camera on every tra plant tray that it moves. So we can look in real time and see a leaf of lettuce and see its moisture based on absorbance and then change the humidity of the ambient airflow around the plant in order to make sure we're optim optimally growing at all times. And then that really feeds into the fact that we're digitizing the recipe. So this is our technology, which I don't know if it's not gonna play. Um, it's fine, you can come see us at our table. It's no problem. We got the same animation. Essentially our robot goes and grabs a tray as I mentioned, takes a picture and then moves it on. And our system at all times knows where every tray is in the farm and uh, also knows what the status of that tray is and the plants in there. So instead of just simply selling our technology to uh, other vertical farms, uh, 
we're actually going to take our multiple layers of innovation and layer that into our own farm. And by doing that, we can get closer to the end consumer. We can best our competition with better margins. We can start making uh, development and redevelopment opportunities in Pittsburgh and in other cities directly by redeveloping areas that are in ripe uh, in need of that. And then on top of everything else, we can then grow faster. And we can either do that through our own corporate expansion or through potential franchising opportunities. And the other nice thing is, while we're doing that, we can still license our hardware and software. We can get a recurring revenue stream from that. But most importantly, we can compound our data aggregation because we're not just going to get and collect the data that we get out of our own farm, but also from the farms that are our customers. It's exactly what uh, Amazon did with its online marketplace and doing that to retailers like Target. And that's where we got the inspiration to double dip in the same fashion. When it comes to adjustable markets, another reason why we're going to go ahead and want to do our own farm speaks for itself. Um, indoor farming, the industry-wide, is growing over 30% year over year. Um, in addition to doing the hardware software supply, uh, the cannabis market, medical marijuana grow, um, that's something that we can look into putting into our vertical system to make sure that that's being done optimally as well. And of course, that market is growing and expected to grow five times over the next uh, few years. So when thinking about smart cities and thinking about vertical farming and robotany and how that compares to traditional agriculture, if you take our superior uh, crop density, uh, the multiple harvest per year, uh, you take into account our same day freshness and the premiums that come with that, uh, we're kind of put in that enviable position where uh, we can program and make uh, our um, plants the best tasting with the highest quality and have the lowest production cost per unit in doing so. On top of that and looking against our competition, uh, some companies like Spread, which is in Japan, has focused purely on automation and done little in the way of data analytics. And then a company like Green Collar Foods is on the opposite end of that spectrum. So in summary, we believe we're in a superior, unique position uh, against our direct competitors. And to sort of put those last two slides into some numbers, um, high level for you, you take that 100 times I mentioned about other farms. Well, based on our techniques and based on uh, our technology, uh, we believe we can get over 180 times uh, output per square foot compared to traditional farming. And so if you take, for example, a 10,000 square foot farm, which is a quarter of an acre, or you take an abandoned Walmart, either way, in those two spaces, we are producing over 180 times what you could if you just did it in a traditional fashion, and we're doing that with higher margins. So where we are, uh, we are building that prototype that, again, if you come by our table, you can see it's a small scale prototype farm. Uh, it's got our hardware and our software integrated in that. Uh, that's what we're building right now. We'll then be able to, in a couple months, put our little controlled environment box around that and start test growing plants. And at that point, you can start to imagine you take that small scale farm, you scale it out, extrapolate it into what will be the size of our full fledged farm. Um, and that little piece will be the example of our human free grow room. As a team, although we are sort of in the beginning stages, we feel very confident that we can be successful because together uh, we have the business, the robotics, and the systems and operations. Uh, engineering experience, so we can build the technology, we can execute the business model, and then we can scale it. And so I uh, lastly just want to give a, a quick shout out to all of our partners and advisors, folks like Dave Moeni and Craig Markowitz, who are wonderful advisors for us. Uh, can't thank you enough, and thanks to Oracle for letting us be here today. And so with that, uh, vertical farming is the future, and especially when you think about smart urban agriculture and smart cities. Uh, and robotany is the future of vertical farming. So please stop by our table and see us. Thank you.